Tony proceeded to tell me that when the President got in the Beast, he thought that they were going up to the Capitol, and when Bobby had relayed to him, we're not, we don't have the assets to do it, it's not secure, we're going back to the West Wing. The President had very strong, a very angry response. The President reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Angle. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. Within hours of that hearing, sources close to both the Secret Service and former White House Deputy Chief of Staff Tony Ornato claimed that the two said the incident never happened and were willing to testify to it under oath. We'll just note, though, the agency is not denying the former president was angry about not being taken to the Capitol, only whether or not there was an altercation. But now other Trump White House aides, former communications director Alyssa Farah and former advisor to the vice president Olivia Troy are pushing back against Ornato's supposed denial. They say this wouldn't be the first time he denied conversation he had with his former colleagues. And it's worth noting that Ornato, whose appointment from a Secret Service official to top White House advisor was highly unprecedented at the time, is still employed, still employed right now. Yeah. By the Secret Service. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he obviously he's a Trumper. He's all in. Could we could we put up those uh, tweets again before we bring in Carol? I just want to look and see. This is a guy that, uh, yeah, I went from being Secret Service guy to working for Trump to Secret Service guy. Olivia Troy says uh, Tony or Ornato sure seems to deny conversations he's apparently had. First, this one with Keith Kellogg and I alone can fix it. Now he's denying the story he told Cassidy Hutchison. Those of us who worked with Tony knows where his loyalties lie. He should testify under oath. And then Alyssa Farah Griffin writes, Tony Ornato lied about me, too. During the protest at Lafayette Square in 2020, I told Mark Meadows and Ornato that they needed to warn the uh, press staged there before clearing the square. Meadows replied, we aren't doing that. Tony later lied and said the exchange never happened. He knows it did. So, again, certainly, Mika, it sounds like uh, from from uh, Trump staffers who, who were there, um, uh, this guy lies and he lies out of what he considers to be uh, you know, well, you have to you know, look at where we're Donald at. Trump. The, uh, look at where we're at. I mean, a lot of the reasons why we're, we are where we are is because a, a lot of people were, were afraid to do anything that would no. upset the president, even, you know, even if things were highly inappropriate. Who knows? That is an understatement. Yeah, I mean, who knows? <laughs> Maybe somebody uh, called him up or wrote him, threatened yeah. him. Maybe he got uh, one of those texts say, that said, you know, like, President you know, like loves you. Doing the mob. Knows and you're loyal. You, you better lie under oath. So yeah. we'll see if he's going to lie under oath or not, because, of course, nobody believes him. I mean, there are people that are on another channel that are desperate to believe him, but nobody believes so him. So one of the inconsistencies mentioned in the tweets that we just showed came from the 2021 book, I Alone Can Fix It, by Washington Post, Carol Lenig and Philip Rucker. Lenick has also written another book about the Trump White House entitled A Very Stable Genius, and a third about the history of the Secret Service entitled Zero Fail. So she knows a thing or two about all of this. And the investigative reporter for The Washington Post joins us now. So what do you make of, of the um, emphasis that, that some far-right Networks and Republicans are making about Ornato's positions. Denial. On Trump. Well, first off, um, I agree with you, Joe, and also with you, Mika, um, that Tony Ornato's situation is not so great. This is a person who worked as President Trump's security detail leader, the number one guy protecting the boss. And the boss liked him so much, he installed him in a political White House job. That broke every Secret Service tradition in the book because he stayed as a Secret Service employee, but Trump mm. essentially had him 
directing the Secret Service to make sure that all of his campaign events, all of his photo ops, everything he wanted to do to get reelected went off without a hitch. That included campaign rallies that caused COVID surges. That include the clearing, the forcible clearing of peaceful protesters from Lafayette Square. Tony Ornato was the, the secret hand behind all of that. And that's what Trump wanted. Trump White House staffers and Secret Service agents have told me repeatedly he's a Trump acolyte. He will defend the president to the end. And he remains in contact with Trump world. So I want to stress that also Tony Arnato has indicated to his bosses that this story Cassidy Hutchinson told didn't happen. Well, Tony Arnato has said a lot of things didn't happen. He has tried to say to the press and to me indirectly that the clearing of Lafayette Square was not done for President Trump's photo op. Well, that's not true. He was at the center of that. So I, I take Alyssa and Olivia's points because they're saying in their experience, uh, things that we reported, Tony tried to deny. I'll say this as an additional remark, Mika and Joe, the Secret Service often <laughs> tries to deny things that are unflattering. Uh, and then when the rubber hits the road, we learn there's a little bit more to it. I want to give always everyone the benefit of the doubt. And if Tony Arnato testifies under oath that he exaggerated this story to Cassidy Hutchinson and it didn't happen in the limo, forgive me, in the suburban on January 6th, as she relays, then that's important and we should take that seriously. And Carol, Cassidy Hutchinson is not exactly playing a game of telephone. In her testimony, she quoted directly <laughs> Tony Arnato. She said she stepped into that office and he told her the details of the story, the way she described it with the lunging and the grabbing of the wheel and all of that. I want to ask you about the other man in that room, Bobby Angle, the lead engine, uh, excuse me, the lead agent in that uh, for President Trump, who was also in the suburban that day. There's been some talk that he's a Trump loyalist. What more do we know about him? Bobby Engel is also viewed as extremely aligned with President Trump, a big supporter of his, but, you know, ultimately a professional agent who, who let's be honest, made the right call on January 6th and, and told the president, no, we're not going, sir. Um, the Secret Service has confirmed that multiple times. We wrote about that. I wrote about that a few weeks ago. The president had been agitating to go on that march. Bobby Engel got word of this from Tony Ornato before January 6th and said, that's not happening. On January 6th, when Mark Meadows sort of led the president to believe that he might be able to go up to the Capitol after his rally at the Ellipse, as tens of thousands of people were sort of becoming a fomented mob by the president, uh, Meadows doesn't come clean with the president. He just basically says, hey, maybe you'll be able to go, I think, to talk to Bobby. Bobby Engel is the person who takes the lion's roar in the face and says, no, sir, that is not happening. That's a good security decision because it would have been insane for President Trump to take a motorcade up to the Capitol without anybody marking the motorcade, without any Metropolitan Police Department officials able to close down a safe route, that would have been insanity. And by the way, at the same time, Metropolitan Police Department officers were being called on an emergency basis by the Capitol Police because an early group of protesters, now we know they were the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, were on their way breaking through police barriers heading up the hill of the, of the Capitol. Hey, so, Carol, you've written a book uh, about Secret Service. You know, you know about them well. Uh, if, if this happened inside uh, the beast, what's, what's the likelihood that uh, the people inside reported that to the Secret Service? And there's some records somewhere. Uh -huh. are, are spoke to other people who weren't fierce Trump loyalists, because, as you know, and as as a lot of uh, people in inside Washington know, uh, there were some fierce Trump loyalists inside the Secret Service, so much so uh, that it caused some concerns inside the Biden administration early on. Uh, but is the Secret Service as a whole, uh, is it an organization that would record something like this? 
and then get that information in front of the committee, or would they try to bury it as well? Joe, it's a great question, and I wish I could answer you definitively about the limo driver, who is a fairly junior agent, a GS-13, young in his career, I, I, and also Bobby Engel and Tony Arnato. I can't tell you what they're precisely going to say, other than they have told their bosses they were that Bobby Engel was not assaulted. They have told their bosses that uh, there was no lunge for the steering wheel. But I will just caution everybody. I've heard the Secret Service deny a lot of things that turned out to be true. And mm. they turned out to be true in records. They turned out to be true in various things. Joe, your question about was it recorded? If Bobby Engel and the GS-13 limo driver are basically the only people in this vehicle, and, and there may have been a third, but those are the two key people in this vehicle. It's Bobby Engel's decision whether to, to report that he's been assaulted by the president. It's a crime to assault a federal officer, but Bobby Engel's under no obligation to say, hey, I feel like I was assaulted. If he you know, had a hand placed on his shoulder, on his clavicle, Maybe he just said, hey, Mr. President, settle down. We don't know yet, but it's it's not incumbent on him to record that. And I've got to say, every detail leader that I've talked to, former detail leader that I've talked to in the last uh, day has said, if the president came at me, I don't think I would report that as an assault on the fe on a federal officer. You know, a detail yeah. leader basically would not do that. Um, I will tell you that there's one other critical thing to remark upon, and that is Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony. I spoke with the former head of Biden's detail yesterday, and he said, <laughs> I want to put this just right. He said, as a former polygraph examiner, Cassidy Hutchinson was not lying. The material that she provided was so specific and so carefully described that that was a story she was told in those details. 